Hello and thank you for joining me. In the past, we've talked about doubt. We've discussed the many ways Satan can use it against us. We've talked about the way once God has set his word in our hearts, we will always come back to it. We've meditated on the truth of God's word, never returning unfulfilled. We've discussed God's promises and commandments. Today, let's go back to where it all began for us, for all of humanity, and see where the Spirit leads. But first, let's pray, because we cannot do this without God. Father God, as we consider your word today, we ask that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will guide us. And may these words of my mouth and this meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture is taken from Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 17. I'll be reading from the Holman Christian Standard Bible, so please follow along on your own Bible. Genesis 2, 7 through 17. Let us hear the word of God. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground, and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had formed. The Lord God caused to grow out of the ground every tree pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river went out from Eden to water the garden. From there it divided and became the source of four rivers. The name of the first is Pishon, which flows through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. Gold from that land is pure. Delium and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is Ginon, which flows through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris, which runs east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. This is the word of the Lord. Praise and thanks be to God. The book of Genesis records God, upon creating the universe, declaring, it was good, and he was very pleased with it. Then he created man, and he created him in his own likeness. God must have really wanted us, considering what he did. He didn't need anyone else. He was and remains whole and complete, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all working together to maintain this amazing universe in all its complexity. But he stopped to create us. Then to show how much he loved us and wanted us, he created the Garden of Eden. He created this garden as a place of abundance and perfection a place he could be in perfect harmony, in perfect relationship with us. He created it just for us and gave its care over to his ultimate creation. He gave man, humanity, dominion over all creation. He even let us name all the creatures of the earth. He loved us so much that he didn't want us to be lonely, so he made woman that we would have a helpmate and a companion, someone to share all this wonderful provision, someone to be one with, someone to share in a relationship with God as they enjoyed time together, walking, talking, caring for the garden and each other. What an awesome love our Creator has always had for us. He gave us the gift of free will so that we could choose to love Him. And he has always wanted us to decide for ourselves. 
he did not ever want to impose himself on us. He wants us to come to him because we want to. He only gave us one little restriction, just one, that we not eat the fruit of one tree. Only one. But we couldn't, wouldn't even do that for this loving creator. We immediately used his gift of free will to satisfy our own desires. And sadly, not much has changed in our human nature to this very day. And God could have said right then and there in the garden, as we disobeyed, this isn't working out, and been done with us right then and there. He didn't. He loves us too much for that. He knew we would continue to put ourselves first. Remember, this is the God who knows all for all eternity. Nothing is hidden from God. So instead of abandoning us, he just put us out of the garden, and off we went to do our own thing. And boy, did it start out well. Didn't take us long before Adam and Eve's firstborn Cain killed his brother Abel, because he thought God saw Abel as his favorite. That God liked Abel's offering more than his own. The first time we see the ugly face of jealousy. Well, we certainly got off to a good start, and it just got worse and worse and worse, until God finally said, Noah, build me an ark. I'm going to start over again. And God promised Noah, and all of us, he would never again flood the earth, and he gave us a rainbow to remind us of his promise. It's so sad to see this wonderful symbol of God's love being co-opted by those who shun God and his love. God told Noah to go forth and repopulate the earth, and he gave us the animals and grains of the earth to eat. And later, God called Abram and told him to leave his home and go where he, God, would lead him, promising he would make Abram the father of nations. Abraham listened to God, and exercising his free will, he did as God asked. So God changed his name from Abram, which means exalted father, to Abraham, which means father of nations. God called him friend and considered him righteous because of his faith. Beloved, I don't know about you, but I would dearly love to hear God call me friend and tell me he considers me righteous. How about you? As we know, time went on, and the Abrahams and the Noahs of the world became harder and harder to find. They seemed to be fewer and fewer day by day. But then came Joseph and the exile to Egypt and ultimately slavery. And after 400 years living with other gods in disobedience to Abraham's God, the people called out to God, the God of the father Abraham, to deliver them. God didn't have to. They had, after all, once again made their own mess. But he loves us so much that he called Moses and sent him to them, promising that through Moses, obedience and faith, though it took some convincing that God would deliver Israel out of bondage. Wouldn't you think by now they would realize how powerful and faithful God is? You would think that everyone by now would realize. But I don't really think we do. Well, mostly everyone knows how it went. The people reluctantly followed Moses, and God delivered what he promised. And God is very clear in Ezekiel 14, verse 6, when he says, Therefore say to the house of Israel, This is what the Lord says, Repent and turn from your idols, turn your faces away from all your de detestable things. And if that wasn't clear enough, listen to what he says in Second Chronicles 7, verses 13 and 14. If I close the sky so there is no rain, or if I command the grasshopper to consume the land, 
or if I send pestilence on my people, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing right now, with all of the insanity that's going on in this world? But no, they wouldn't. They couldn't. We won't. We can't even do that. We continue to do it our way. And if you find that hard to swallow, just watch the evening news. But make sure to have some Pepto-Bismol handy, because it just might upset your stomach. God gave Moses the law so that we would see clearly that we could never achieve righteousness without him, without God. And then while Moses was on the mountain receiving the law, do you remember what we, the faithful, were doing with our free will? That's right. We were once again using our free will, turning our back on God by worshiping a golden calf. And seeing this, God said to Moses, and I'm paraphrasing here, I've had it with these people. I'm going to eliminate them. Moses prayed. He begged, he pleaded with God, and God forgave us once again. Time went on. God said, here is the promised land. It's yours for the taking. We said, there are giants in there. We can't go in there. And so on and so on it goes through the ages. We wouldn't trust God to do it. We wouldn't trust God to do it through us. And like a yo-yo, we continue through the centuries, back to God, away from God. Graciously, his love never lets go of us. He wants us. God knew we would continue to exercise our free will poorly. So he made us the ultimate promise. A promise only he could fulfill. He promised that he would supply the sacrifice, the only sacrifice that would be acceptable, a sacrifice that will allow every human to become righteous in his sight. And here's the unbelievable part. God wants us. God loves us so much that he was willing to make a way for every one of his creations to exercise their free will and accept his loving sacrifice for each of us. He knew when he created us with free will that he would have to do this. He wanted our love because we wanted to give it through our free will. God did what needed to be done. For God so loved the world. That's us. This Scripture is talking to every human being. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave a piece of himself that all might be saved. Jesus came exactly the way God promised. He lived with us, ate with us, drank with us, talked, cried, laughed with us. He told us of the Father's love. He told us who he was. He showed us who he was through the miracles he performed. He told us he would be rejected and killed. And even those closest to him didn't understand. He was clear. He said, and listen, listen closely to this, brothers and sisters. None come to the Father except by the Son. Still. Some choose not to believe. Exercising their free will yet again, they killed him. Many were satisfied that this would be the end. But God made a promise to all of us. All of us strong-willed and stiff-necked people. And God keeps his promises. Jesus rose from the grave. Many saw him. Some even spoke and ate with him, 
before he ascended to heaven to be with his Father, our Father, our Creator. Jesus made us yet another promise, that he would send his Holy Spirit back to us, and that all, all, not just some, not just a select few, but all who would use their free will, acknowledging their need, accepting him as Lord of their life. Jesus promises to come by the Spirit and live in them, and they would then have God's ultimate promise and desire for them fulfilled. They would be righteous and capable of spending all eternity without pain, without sorrow, bathing in God's very presence in paradise. This was God's plan from the very beginning. He wants us. Our free will messes it up, but our free will can get it back. God makes the offer. All we have to do is say, yes, thank you. John 10 verse 29 reads, My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand, and I and the Father are one. Once we are Jesus, once we belong to Jesus, no power can take us away. 1 John 4 verse 19 says, We love him because he first loved us. The old gospel hymn has us sing, Lord, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise. God wants us. He created us because he wants us. And he has given us free will to accept his eternal love. The offer is still open. Always. Would you pray with me? Father, we pray that you will anoint all who have listened to this message. Anoint them with every blessing you have for them. And we ask that if there are any who have not asked to be yours, that by your Spirit's power, they would be drawn to ask to be yours in such a way that they cannot refuse it. For we ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. And if you need prayer or just someone to talk with, please message me. And I value your input. So please let me know what you're thinking. And may your week be filled to overflowing with the hope and peace and joy that the love of Christ Jesus offers. And may you dance before him in that love until we meet again, whether it be here or in heaven above. God bless you.